Hello everyone, welcome to Living Life. As we take a further look in Lazarus' narrative, today we're going to see how Jesus directs his attention to him and show that he's the only one who has authority over sin and death. So as we take a look in today's passage, I hope that your attention is directed to Jesus alone. Whatever situation you may be in, whether it's very difficult, just as Martha and Mary is facing, whatever the situation may be, I hope that this passage allows you to direct your attention to Son of God, who is Jesus Christ, so that you can find an answer in your life, just as this testifies as He is the only one who governs over our sin and our death. Let's take a look in today's passage. John chapter 11, verses 17 through 37. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? So the greatest comfort that Jesus could provide for Martha it's not in a way where we would normally do when we see families who are going through uh, terrible grievances for the lost one by hugging them or uh, displaying our condolences or crying with them together. But instead, Jesus does something very surprisingly different. Uh, he comforts Martha by directing her attention uh, to him alone. We see in verse 25 and 26, where Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? It almost seems like at a moment where Martha needs the greatest comfort for losing her beloved brother, it almost seems like Jesus is testing her faith, saying that, do you believe that I am the resurrection and the life? Now, Jesus said this a bit poetically. We can see that he says, I am the resurrection. And the following part of the verse display why he is a resurrection. It says, the one who believes in me will live even though they die. Now, that is the definition of resurrection, that you will live even though you die. But the second part of it is a bit hard uh, to take into our heart because it says, if Jesus is alive, 
whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Now Jesus is saying to Martha that if you believe in me, that the eternal life starts now, uh, even though you die, that you will continue to live forever. Now for Martha, she said she believed in resurrection, that the dead will rise again in the last day. Well, that for her was easy uh, to believe because that is what almost everyone believed at that time. But to see the resurrection life happening today, where the kingdom of God's power is displayed in your life today, I think that is a bit difficult to believe, not just for me, for many of us, because it was difficult for Martha to believe because she was in a situation where she lost her brother and she was almost blaming Jesus, saying that if you had been here, my brother would not have died. You would have definitely healed him. He would not be in the tomb where he's been um, decaying for the past four days. But this is something that Jesus has intentionally did. He delayed his return so that Lazarus can die, so that the son may be glorified through it, so that he could display one thing for those who have gathered there, and that is to show that he has true authority over sin and death. That's because he is the resurrection and the life. And we can see that in verses uh, 32, uh, 33 all the way to 35, in this specific word, where Jesus was deeply moved in spirit and trouble. In 35, it says, Jesus wept. Now this word, uh, you can see in the next page in your living life, uh, the meaning of it uh, is not quite well translated in the English version. Some say, the German Bible has got it right because uh, the original language for this word means that Jesus was quite angered by the situation. He was very angry and he did not weep because he lost a friend. We all know that Lazarus is going to rise again in a couple of minutes later. And to imagine that Jesus is weeping because he just lost a friend doesn't make sense according to the context we read in the Lazarus narrative. Why Jesus weeps is because he is facing his ultimate enemy, which is death. And he has come here by deliberately delaying so that he could display that he has governance and authority over this. And that should come to Martha as the greatest comfort ever, not by just raising Lazarus, but proving that Jesus is the life and resurrection that whoever believes in Jesus will not die, but live forever. And that is being manifested in front of Martha I, who, uh, who is going through a dire situation in her life. Now I remember a test uh, that has been done for children where they had to walk over a glass paneled walkway. Um, it seems like uh, they, are, they have to walk above a bridge where there's nothing down there because it's a glass panel. And most of the times, these little, little, baby, little babies will not uh, move at all because they're afraid of the height. And they would just hesitate and they would just sit down and cry for their mom and dads to come over. But when mom look at them in, in a smiling face and just encouraging them to come over, miraculously, the babies have the power uh, to just walk over the glass panel bridge uh, just by looking at their mom's smiley face. I'm pretty sure some people have came across this test you can find on YouTube and any of the video sources. But this comes as a quite a surprise because if we direct our attention to Jesus, I believe that we can go over and uh, overcome any of the boundaries or the difficult problems that we may face. So I hope that the story of the Lazarus as we continue to read me, may be an encouragement to you as the Lord is trying to direct your attention to him so that you can walk over your dire situation.
So I hope that every one of us uh, direct our attention to Jesus whenever we face a difficult situation in our life. Even though we may be in fear, I hope that as we take a look upon on Jesus, our fear may be overcome by his grace. So I know that many of us are in difficult situation, especially those in the, in the mission fields where it seems like hoping unto the Lord is only the one answer in your life. And I think according to this passage, that is correct because he's the one who is in authority over sin and death. And if he's the one who is in governance over it, I believe he deserves our attention for he will resolve all our situation. Let us pray. Father, Lord, I believe that you are the resurrection and the life. So Lord God, let your life-giving power work within us as we direct our attention to you. Lord God, do not allow us to look only at our problems, but rather let us lift our eyes and direct our, uh, our, our vision to you so that we may overcome the sin and death problem that we face in our life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This program is produced by the listeners of the audience. 